Good afternoon. Uh, we're joined by Lawrence Perret from San Francisco. He's a professor of anaesthesia who has a special interest in neuromodulation. And he is the organising committee invited lecturer to our ANSCA and FPM annual scientific meeting. Lawrence, welcome to Kuala Lumpur. Thank you. Um, I hope you've got over your jet lag. Oh, absolutely. Um, good, and we had good dinner last night. Now, yesterday, you sort of gave us an idea of where we're at at the moment in terms of neuromodulation. You, you spoke about 50-50, essentially we were getting 50% relief in 50% of patients and we wanted to explore ways of improving that. Can you just uh, talk to that point a little bit? Sure. Uh, there's been an explosion of technology in the last few years and uh, some of that is really focusing on some new uh, understanding of the physiology surrounding uh, uh, neuromodulation, spinal cord stimulation for the treatment yeah. of pain. And by implementing some of that uh, new knowledge, we've been able to expand our success rates tremendously so that uh, uh, instead of being in 50% of the patients getting 50% benefit, we now see that in many of the new technologies, 80% of the patients are getting 80% benefit. Yeah. And this is really the result of implementation of the uh, better understanding of how these devices work and uh, utilizing that in our uh, device uh, development. And, and of course the, the engineering has become so much more elegant. Um, we've got, um, we've, we've been doing, sorry, shall we say, standard neuromodulation for quite some time now and uh, dorsal root ganglion stimulation is philosophically and physiologically much more pleasing. Can you talk to us about how you see that developing over the next number of years? Well, it's certainly uh, opened up a lot of territory which was not easily accessible to uh, treatment in the past. Isolated areas, especially in the ileinguinal area, isolated um, uh, post herpetic neuralgia cases or post uh, thoracotomy uh, pain, uh, isolated foot pain have all been uh, more of a challenge in the past with standard spinal cord stimulation. And uh, DRG stimulation has really opened up the window to uh, provide greater benefit for our patients. So we've got some modalities of high frequency and burst stimulation and then combinations of that. Do you think they're going to be used together uh, or, or are they still going to be separate entities? I think uh, in the future we'll have devices that give us a uh, variety of uh, stimulation options. I think that's the key. Uh, there's still some proprietary and technological issues that make that happen. but. I have no doubt that uh, our devices in the hopefully near future will allow us to provide a lot of those different waveforms. So one of the other things that we struggle with a little bit is the fact that uh, patients can get overstimulation and you spoke a little bit about the, the feedback loops that might be emerging out of our current understanding of the physiology. Can you talk to a little bit about that? Right. Uh, so for the last 50 years, we have developed devices that actually provide a stimulation based just on what the device is programmed to do, never about what the system or the body is actually responding to. And so for the first time, we have devices that are in clinical trials that are actually recording the effect of that stimulation in the nervous system itself and using that information to feed back into the device to either increase or decrease the stimulation parameters on a microsecond by microsecond basis. Right. And that is going to provide us with the ability to better control our devices and individualize the therapy for, for our patients. Right. So it's a pretty exciting and positive outlook. So say in five years time, we'll presumably have maybe better engineering and better understanding. And so I suspect that you'd be looking at um, more confident um, adoption of this technology for a wider variety of patients? The number of clinical trials that are ongoing is uh, at a uh, large uh, increase rate and that each study is giving us more information and so our data collection, our ability to control things and get better responses is just at a uh, uh, exponential growth rate and so in five to ten years I have no doubt that our successes will be uh, uh, much more than we've ever seen in the past. So lastly, um, and in our, our side of the world, the economics of this need to be proved, and presumably in North America as well. Do you think uh, with, the, with, with the improvement in technology, improvement in materials and understanding, this is going to become more expensive or less expensive and therefore more available? I think it's a lot like our cell phones. Uh, 
Our first cell phones are probably more expensive than they are today, and yet they were nowhere near the capability. Um, as long as uh, we as consumers are requesting greater uh, device capability and we demand that of our manufacturers. Uh, and we tell them what we can afford and what we can't afford. I think they will see an opportunity to provide us with the technology we have at the price that we can afford. And with more people coming into the market, I think that's going to provide a downward pressure on cost so that we can uh, provide this therapy in places that have not been able to afford it in the past. And Lawrence, I'm just going to finish up by, we're at the moment in Australia, we're embarking on a national registry of implantable devices mm. for pain therapies. I mean, this follows essentially the major joint replacements and right. breast implants and various different things. Is that something that you've had any experience with in North America or is it something that you struggle with as we have? It's certainly been a struggle, but it is a major point of discussion and uh, uh, active work of the North American Neuromodulation Society. Uh, we definitely believe that this is the direction we need to be heading toward, but there are lots of logistical concerns, but uh, I'm hopeful that we'll get those behind us and move that forward. Lawrence, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you have some time to spend in uh, Kuala Lumpur and enjoy it with your wife, and that we see you in Australia or New Zealand uh, for meetings in the future. Thanks very much. I'll, I'll see you next month at the INS meeting. Indeed. Okay, thanks very thank much. Thank you.